get this started a little early just so I can make sure everything is working as it should. And that way we can just allow people to arrive at their own leisure. That seems to be working, there's stream elements. Okay. Ah, screw you, Twitch ad. See if it's working. Yeah, it's working. Good. Well, so the audio is now working as it should be. I'm glad I've got all that stuff worked out. Last week was a complete nightmare. But this week is to be all good. Now, we are going to be sitting here in this uh, pre race lobby for a little bit. Not everyone's turned up just yet. We should be getting on the way, but yeah, we're going to have to wait a little while for everyone to show up. We should, I think, according to the attendance, we should have 14. So, roughly the same size field as we had last week. We've just got to wait, we've got to give it a little bit. And once everyone arrives, we can get underway. Hello, KD. Ah, I still have that popped up in the bottom. Ah, it doesn't matter. Can I turn that off? Hang on, let's have a look. E capture options. Include my card, include party audio. Yeah, no. Nah. Don't think I can. Eh, it doesn't matter. It's fine. At least it's in the bottom right, out of the way. So. But yeah, we're just chilling here for a bit, chat. You get to listen to the F122 theme. So then this stream doesn't get copyrighted to Helen back. <laughs> Um, hopefully, at least in a couple of minutes. Oh. Oh, it only pops up for me, does it? Really? Oh. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. I'm just looking at it now. Well, I might keep that up for other streams, and that way I can actually see what chat's talking about and not have a... Uh, extra screen up looking at Twitch, but I'll keep Twitch up anyway. But, uh, okay, I didn't know that. I am still learning. All these new features included in the PS5, and that's a good one, I like that. Yeah, every so often I miss out on something with chat. Yeah, it does. I agree, KD. Yeah, no. Cool. Oh, we're not starting up already, are we? It's meant to be 14, we're one short. Well, there's the call. It seems that we're going ahead. 13. Hello, Deathstorm. Ah, not the biggest attendance in the world. It's something I've always believed in is that field size never dictates race quality. Hopefully we get to see something interesting tonight. But, um, yeah, our location doesn't always create great racing. I'll get into that as soon as I get into the intro. I'll go and find it. Have it up on screen. When the screen goes to black, I'll start up my intro and get into it. <laughs> Uh, sometimes those lower categories will just create some really cool races. But here in Tier 1, these guys, they're, they're decent. <laughs> they're pretty alright. So, But anyway, hello everyone and welcome to Round 2 of the AM1 Championship here on Contest of Speed. I'm Lane Everingham, your commentator for this event, and today we'll be racing at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve for the Canadian Grand Prix. Located in the middle of the St. Lawrence River in the city of Montreal, the racetrack originally known as the Ile Notre Dame circuit was created in 1978 and was renamed to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in 1982 in tribute to his tragic passing in the same year. 
The circuit in real life is recognised as one of the best circuits on the Formula 1 schedule, as it seems to churn out decent races on a semi-regular basis. Unfortunately, here in the virtual world, the circuit is not regarded as highly as its real life counterpart. This is mainly due to how easy it is to get track limit warnings here. The 2.71 mile 14 turn circuit consists of four chicanes, each of which provides a major tripping hazard. Uh, excuse me, just lost where I was looking at. Major tripping hazard to anyone who goes through them. The most infamous of these chicanes is the last one, dubbed the Wall of Champions. It's incredibly fast and tight, with a solid concrete wall planted on the outside. It means to anyone who makes a mistake, they'll either cop a warning or have a race ending meet and greet with the Wall of Champions. Conditions are set to be nice and dry for both qualifying and in the race, so there shouldn't be any wet weather interference tonight. Though I believe in real life it was set to snow here in Montreal, but here in the virtual world it's going to be nice and dry. But before we focus on this qualifying session here, there is a little bit of news to go through first from last week's race in Bahrain. Now there was a sing single incident report involving Cam Tizzle. Now we watched his woes during that race where he had an awful time controlling his car around Bahrain International Circuit. A report was put in about his actions and a result came from that was a disqualification from round one plus three penalty points for unsportsmanlike conduct for breaking marker boards and another three points for unsportsmanlike conduct basically uh, giving him penalty points for spinning about. That meant a total of six penalty points, which would have resulted in Cam serving a qualifying ban here in Montreal. But Cam put in a appeal report, which was successful. And the penalty points reduced from six down to three. So he won't be serving a qualifying ban here tonight. But that's pretty much it in terms of incidents from last week's race and it also means the results stand from last week's race. Now leading the Drivers' Championship is Barmer 22 in the Red Bull, leading the way on 26 points. He got a full complement of points last week in Bahrain. Next is Vermeu on 18, followed by Darth Vader on 15, Andy Wu on 12, Cos Saint on 10, Mitch Burns, the man on screen, on 8, Shelley the Turtle on 6, Elite Game Boy on 4, Bursey on 2, and everyone else yet to score. In the Constructors, Red Bull are leading the way on 36 points, followed by Ferrari on 20, Haas on 15, Williams on 14, and rounding out the top 5 is McLaren on 12. Next is AlphaTauri on 4 points, Alfa Romero have 1 point, thanks to Jamie James, he finished in 10th place, but he's a reserve driver. So he's not included in the Drivers' Championship. He only scores in the Constructors. That means three teams are yet to score. Alpine, Aston Martin and Mercedes-Benz. But that's pretty much it in terms of news. We can now focus on this qualifying session. Now, we've got Mitch Burns here coming towards the end of a flying lap. We'll see how he fares here. We'll see what benchmark he sets. As he goes into the famous wall of champion chicane. He doesn't invalidate, which is a really good thing because that is really, really easy to do. And there's the benchmark. 1 minute 11.007. Lovely stuff. Now, looking at the rest of the drivers, we've got Kit and Petter. It doesn't appear that he's on a flying lap, though the totem pole, pole indicates it. He's invalidated his first run. Bursey getting ready to set a flying lap. Tell me what, we might right on board here with the Ferrari driver give you a tour of this circuit into turn one one of the better overtaking spots on the circuit and around the tight right hander of turn two and it's a short shoot towards this fast chicane of turns three and four nice and easy through there it's very easy to cut too much through there around turn five and into the second chicane of turns six and seven missing the apex a little bit there but he gets through the section pretty tidily no over no wheel spin either. Down towards the third chicane of turns 8 and 9. Really easy to cut too much of turn 9, especially if you carry too much speed through turn 8. Now into the hairpin of turn 10, a potential overtaking spot on the circuit, especially in wet weather conditions. You might see a few drivers try and send it down the inside. Around the small kink of turn 11, now around the even smaller kink of turn 12. Yes, that is a corner 
on the official track map. I've always said it's ridiculous and it's going to be ridiculous until the day I die. And through the wall of champion chicane, easily the trickiest part of the racetrack, but Burzy negotiates it well. And he sets a 1 minute 11.602, goes third quickest overall. Ketan Petter still on a preparation lap, it seems. Shelly the Turtle making his way out of turn two, nice and steady in second gear, then climbing his way up through the gearbox into turns three and four. Fifth gear, oh, he even validates that turn three. That is so incredibly easy to do. I noticed basically everyone in the AM1 track, uh, in the AM1 chat, complaining about this track and its track limits. And it's basically a universal thing with almost any racing league with Montreal. This track is just notorious for track limit warnings. They're so easy to get, which makes qualifying a royal pain in the backside. More so than almost any other racetrack on the Formula One schedule. It doesn't help as well that the most notorious part for track limits... <coughs> excuse me comes at the very end of the racetrack. Like, you can do an entire lap, pitch perfect. You can hit every apex, every braking zone, every traction zone, spot on. But then you come up to the final part of the racetrack, and you completely screw it up through the wall of champions. And it's so easy to do, as Andy Wood jumps up to P3. I agree, Deathstorm. Imola is pretty shocking as well. Because it too has plenty of chicanes. You got Tamburello, you got Villeneuve, you got Variante Alta. You also got the incredibly fast section at Aqua Minerale that forms turns 11, 12, and 13, I believe, on the racetrack. So easy to invalidate through there. As Kent and Petter, he's got a missing front wing on his McLaren. Hopefully, he'll get back into the pit safely and put on a new wing. But yeah, Imola is definitely another shocking circuit where it's so easy to invalidate. There are a couple that you have to keep a mo keep your eye out for uh, during a championship season in F122. It doesn't help as well that these cars are quite twitchy. They're very difficult to drive without assist. And that's something else I noticed in the AM1 chat where drivers t were talking about their cars being incredibly pointy. They have a lot of turn in, but not a very stable rear end at all. Which is quite un understandable, because there, there are a fair few low to medium speed corners. So you need that extra rotation to try and find speed. The problem is, when you have so much rotation, it's very easy to lose control of the car. Like, you can find more pace, but it's also way easier to make a mistake. So you need to strike a balance between a car that can rotate like crazy but is also stable enough so that you don't lose control, particularly during race conditions. Now down the casino straight here comes Barma22, our current uh, championship leader after his win in Bahrain and three-time AM1 Drivers' Champion. He makes his way out of the wall. Oh my goodness! You could barely fit a piece of paper between him and the wall there, and he jumps to the top by one second. <laughs> oh, what's that? That's uh, point 0.9, and he parks it <laughs> on the grass. Oh my goodness me. A 10 flat. Uh, that, that's a lap. That, that's a lap. A 10 flat. And Mitch Burns getting ready. Darth Vader getting ready as well. Finished on the podium back in Bahrain. Fortunately, a time penalty demoted him to P3, if I recall correctly. He finished P2 as Barma gets disqualified from the session. So he is actually going to start from the back. This is something that he was going to do. I think he and Vamu have got a bet going that if Barma starts from the back and wins this event, Vamu will stop making fun of him in the chat. So that's why he's disqualified himself. He's done it deliberately. But he decided to flex on everyone as Switchback jumps to P2 with a 1 minute 11.051. He is currently 44 thousandths of a second behind Mitch Burns, who still occupies pole position after Barmer's retirement at the very least. There goes a Ferrari off the racetrack trying to give way to Darth Vader who makes his way out to turn 10 and around turn 11. Full throttle here. He'll open DRS, shift it into top gear. We're spe seeing speeds reaching around 200 miles an hour. 
202, 203, no, 202. Still incredibly fast speeds heading into the chicane. And now down the main straightaway, Vader will cross the line to do a 10-8. He jumps up to pole position. Bursey briefly jumped up as well. He did a 10-9. Though it didn't get any prompt at the top of the screen saying that he got up to pole position. It comes up with a purple lap at the top of the screen, but nothing was there. But Bursey did a 10-9, Vader's done a 10-8. So two drivers in the 10s right now. Mitch Burns isn't able to improve, he goes back into the pits. Switchback has switched off the battery. He might have another crack at a flying lap here. We'll wait and see. One of the nicer things about Montreal, and it's one of the few nice things, is that it's a relatively short lap. Like we're seeing times in the one minute 10s, one minute 11s, it means that the outlap and the inlap around this circuit is very, very short. Which means in an 18 minute qualifying session, you get plenty of opportunity to try and set a lap time. Like we got 7 minutes and 20 seconds left in the session as Switchback invalidates through turns, two, uh, through turns 3 and 4. Very easy to do, very, very easy to do. But he's got tons of time to just go back into the pits, put on another set of tyres. Like with seven minutes left, he could get probably a minimum of two runs in. As Vermu jumps to the top with a 10-4. That is quite a nice lap time. He is just under half a second clear of Vader in second place. But yeah, it comes up with a purple time at the top, but it's not doing that for me at the moment. For some reason, I've got no idea why. Saying getting ready to set a flying lap. Cam Tizzle on a flying lap heading down towards the hairpin of turn 10 he's up by 1.2 seconds and he needs that kind of improvement as f1 racer jumps up to seventh place now with a one minute 11.343 he is currently what just under half a second off p2 so we got five tenths separating six places at the moment that's pretty tight pretty cool to see Cam Tizzle heading down the main straightaway up towards the line. It's P9 for him with a 1 minute 11.411 just behind Andy Wu in 8th place. Shelley getting ready. Saint getting ready as well. Weaving about down to Casino Straight. Trying to get some temperature into his tyres. Getting ready for his flying lap attempt. With just under 6 minutes left in qualifying. Nice and steady through the Wall of Champions chicane. You have to be very, very careful there, not just on a flying lap, but also on an out lap. Because if you invalidate, or cut the circuit, I should say, uh, through that chicane during an out lap, you not only invalidate the out lap you want, you're on, but also the flying lap you're about to attempt. So you're just better off taking a nice and easy through there on a out lap, so then you don't invalidate your flying lap attempt. Saint making his way through the chicane of turns 6 and 7. He'll open DRS and head down towards turns 8 and 9. Shifting it into top gear. Entry speed 194 miles an hour. An apex speed of 96 miles an hour. So a deceleration in what? Less than a second? 100 mile an hour deceleration. Less than a second. Sort of shows you the ridiculous braking performance of these things. <laughs> Texas Tornado, what a name, has joined the session. So we should have a 14-car field. That is matching the field we had last week in Bahrain. Entry speed, 205 miles an hour as he heads through the Wall of Champions chicane. Not utilising the full width of the circuit, but utilising enough. And he jumps up to P3, 1 minute 10.912. Darth Vader getting ready for his run, making his way through the chicane. He'll switch on the battery. Open up DRS, head down the main straight, and begin his flying lap attempt towards turn one. Breaking down to fourth, down to third gear, modulating the throttle and brake, just trying to keep the traction and keep the speed up. Exiting turn two, heading towards turn three, down through the gearbox, down to fourth, short shifting up to fifth. Exiting turn four, around the long right-hander of turn five, and he's up by two tenths of a second to the first sector split. If he wants to challenge pole position, he has to find another two tenths and a bit through the following two sectors. DRS open, heading towards turn eight. Eighth gear, 192 miles an hour was the entry speed, but he carried about 99 miles an hour at the apex of turn eight. 
up towards the middle sector split. He's up by just over three tenths of a second. He needs to find more time through this final sector. He needs a nice run out of the hairpin, which he gets. Nice run out of turn 11, right up towards the grass on the outside of the left-hander. Out of turn 12 now, down the straightaway towards the wall of champion chicane. Mitch Burns jumps up to P2 with a 1 minute 10.849. And Vader goes back into the pits. He's not happy with the run. Goes back in to put on another set of soft compound tyres and go out for one final flying lap. Electric Blade getting ready for a run here. Heading towards the wall of champions. He switches on the battery. Goes through the chicane nice and steady. He'll open DRS and head towards the start finish line to begin his flying lap attempt. Down through the gears, down to third gear, same as Vader, but down to second. Short shift maybe. No, he uses all of second, or almost all of second, at the exit of turn two. Very interesting. Through turn three, cutting way too much there. Even I could see that from that point of view. Cut way, way too much. That's an invalidation right there. This flying lap attempt is over. Bursey getting ready for a run. Through the wall of champion chicane. Exiting it in fifth gear. Nice and stable at the exit there. DRS open. Crossing the line to begin the run. Down to turn one. Down to fourth gear. Gear higher than what we've seen before. Down to second gear for turn two. There's a short shift up to third. Now towards the turn three, four chicane. Is it down to fifth gear? Keeps it in fifth. Very tidy run, very sensible through the chicane. First sector split says he's up by just under one tenth of a second. Through the second chicane of turn six and seven. Nice and tidy through there, the car looks very stable. Down towards the chicane of turns eight and nine. Oh, hello. I think I saw someone spinning out. There was someone spinning out, it's Texas Tornado. Slowing down, bringing out yellow flags. He's currently down in 13th position. Oh yeah, Bersi's lost a little bit of time to the middle sector. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And Bersi might get a helping hand from his teammate here. Just a small toe down the casino straight. Nice bit of teamwork from the Ferrari duo. As Bersi sends it through the final chicane. DRS open. Up towards the line for Bersi. Will he improve? No, he does not. Missing out on his PB by 18 thousandths of a second. Switchback has invalidated this run. But he should have enough time to do one more flying lap attempt. Saint is getting ready. Vader is getting ready as well. F1 Racer coming towards the end of a lap. I believe. No, he's beginning a lap right now. He was doing a preparation lap. Trying to dump some extra fuel. Now he's going for his proper run. Andy Wu making his way through the Wall of Champions chicane. Fifth gear. Nice and tidy through there from Andy. Up towards the line now for the McLaren driver. He does a 10, 7, 5, 8. He jumps to the front row, beating Mitch Burns, who has retired from the session. So Mitch can't take back that front row start. Through the chicane goes Cos Saint, making his way towards turn 5. First sector split says for him, he's up by 2 tenths of a second. Vader, meanwhile, making his way out of turn 2, towards the chicane of turns 3 and 4. He'll get on the brakes, bring it down to fourth gear. Short shift up to fifth. Gets a tidy run out of turn four. Around turn five, up towards the first sector split. He's up by just over one tenth of a second. Saint making his way past the middle sector split, and he's up by a monstrous four tenths of a second. If he can find another tenth through this final sector, he might be able to challenge for move for pole position. Switchback, meanwhile, he's up by 84,000. It's a small improvement, but an improvement nonetheless. Saint, two corners to go. The Wall of Champions chicane. He gets through a tidal leap. Not using all of the curb on the outside, though, so he didn't maximize it to its full. Oh, and he misses out on pole by seven hundredths of a second. Can Vader take pole away from Vamu? Through the Wall of Champions chicane, fourth gear. Using a bit of extra curve, a little wiggle. He is pushing hard. Up towards the line. It's a 10-5-6-2. It's P3 for Vader. Vamu will start on pole. So, results from qualifying. It will be Vamu who starts on pole. Beating out Saint by 72 thousandths of a second. Not much at all. Separating the top two. 
Vader will start from P3 with Andy Wu alongside him. Mitch Burns, the first Canadian on the grid. P5 with a 10-8, followed by his fellow Canadian, Bursey, in P6. And we've got Switchback in 7th, Electric Blade in 8th, F1 Racer in 9th, Cam Tizzle rounds out the top 10. And we have Kitten Petter, Shelly the Turtle. Texas Tornado did end up setting a lap, so he'll start P13. And Barma will start from the very back after he deliberately disqualified himself. But he did set a 10 flat during that qualifying session. It wasn't right at the end either, so it wasn't the most perfect conditions at the end of qualifying. <clears throat> so yeah, Barmer's definitely got plenty of pace to show. Doing a 10 flat in not the most ideal conditions. Yeah, he's going to be a tough cookie to beat, that's for sure. Now I'll be keen to see who starts on what time. Because in races past here at Montreal, it's typically been a two-stop. Thanks to the fact that the soft tyre is quite quick. And also the pit lane is relatively short. Because remember, with the pit lane, you get to cut the Wall of Champion chicane. You cut turn one, and basically half of turn two. So it does take a chunk, a fair chunk of the lap out when you go into pit lane. Which makes it relatively short. But then again, in this game, what has been an incredibly common trend is the one-stop medium-to-hard or hard-to-medium strategy. It's been a thing at almost every single racetrack. You really don't get to see the soft tyre used at any circuit on the calendar. And I can't help but feel that it's going to be the same here at Montreal. Even though in the past, in previous games, in F1 2021, in F1 2020 and so on... Two stop has always reigned supreme here at Montreal, but uh, I can't help but feel it's more more than likely going to be a one stop strategy, most likely hard to mediums or me uh, maybe medium to hards maybe depends on safety cars and whatnot if we do get any during this event. Alrighty. Just waiting on Andy Wu to confirm, and then we'll get the counter at the top of the screen started. And then we'll get the formation lap on the way. There's the timer. So 30 seconds to the start of the formation lap. Looking in the garages, I can see Barman's got a set of mediums on standby, which suggests to me that he's going to start on the hard tyre. It's the same story with Vermu. I can see his garage as well. He's got the medium compound tyre sitting there, so I'm thinking he's going to start on the hards as well. But let's find out, shall we? The formation lap is about to begin. Alright, let's get the necessary telemetry up, shall we? I don't need the telemetry, sorry. Need detail. And what do you know? What a surprise. So, Vermu, starting from pole position, is on the hard compound tyre, with Saint starting alongside him on the medium compound tyre. Inter oh, Vermu, what the hell are you doing? He lost control out of turn two. That is quite embarrassing. Fortunately for him, you don't get damage on the formation lap, but you do look like a bit of a goose by doing that. Saint starting alongside him on the medium tyre. So Saint has a real shot of getting Vermu off the line try and lead out of turn two in particular thanks to the grippier medium tyre that he's going to start on Darth Vader starting P3 he's on the hard tyre Andy Wood fourth starting on the hards as well Mitch Burns in fifth on the mediums Bursey in sixth on the hard tyre same with Switchback in seventh position next we have Electric Blade F1 Racer and rounding out the top ten we have Cam Tizzle they're all starting on the medium tyre we have Ketan Petter, P11, starting on the hard. Same with Shelley the Turtle in 12th. Texas Tornado, starting on the mediums. And Barmer, starting from the very back, is on the hard compound tyre. We've got six drivers starting on the mediums. That means seven must be starting on the hard tyre. Sorry, can't math. Eight. Eight are starting on the hard tyre. We have 14 cars, not 13. Nice little donut there from Kit and Petter, giving the fans what they want. They want some entertainment. Giving that on the formation lap at all time, of all times. Well, I suppose on the formation lap, you don't get any damage, so it doesn't hurt to do a spin or two. Might hurt the tyres a little bit, though. All right, the move. He'll be starting on the inside 
down towards uh, turn one. It doesn't look like the inside as the track bends to the right, but the opening corner is a left-hander, so Vamu has the inside line, and he's also angled the car across so he can try and cover Saint. But if Saint gets a tidy start, there won't be much Vamu can do about it. We've got five red lights. And we're underway here in Montreal. It is a nice start from Vamu. He covers well. That's fantastic stuff from the Ferrari driver. Darth Vader looking to the inside here at turn one. We've got free wide action here. Through turn two, Blade, Bursey and Burns. Contact, lots of contact. And somehow they all get through unscathed. Heading towards turns three and four now. Drivers need to go through here. Single file. Double stacking through here isn't very good. Oh, no, they all get through unscathed. We almost had gar cars go side by side through there as Cam and Shelley battle for position through turn seven. Oh, Shelley almost got in front, but he had a bit of a wiggle. That allows Cam Tizzle to draw back alongside. Te Texas Tornado is going to get involved here. Looks to the inside, but can't fully commit to the move. No, we had drivers stack up double time through there, through turns three and four. Somehow we got through it all. F1 racer going a bit wide there, breaking a bit too deep at the hairpin. It's cost him a place. Barmer's up to ninth already. He's inside the top ten. Not great signs for those in front of him. Here comes Electric Blade on Andy Wu. Down the inside into the penultimate corner. And he gets a position. Blades into fourth. And I think Vader was a tad bit wide there at turn 14. But Vader a bit lucky that he didn't clip the barrier. Into turn one. Kids and Petters overtaking Cam Tizzle. Cam's down to 14th position now. Out of turn two, heading towards the chicane of turns three and four. Heading down the hill. Out of the chicane. Everyone getting through relatively unscathed. Our race leader, though, Vamu, is breaking away. 1.8 seconds is the gap. Looks quite fast out in front with the clear air. Saint doing all he can to try and keep up, but those medium tyres aren't exactly giving him enough pace to try and catch up. Darth Vader in third position. He's got a bit of company as well as Bursey overtakes Andy Wu. That's at the exit of turn nine, and here comes Mitch Burns. Down the inside here at turn ten. He's got the nose alongside, and he gets in front. Nice move there from Mitch Burns. He's into P6, and he's trying to fight back, though. He slots into the slipstream, heading down the casino straight towards the Wall of Champions. Farmers overtake and switch back. Tornado has spun at the hairpin of turn 10. Through the chicane. Nice and steady from everyone. The move sets a new fastest lap, 14 flat. These drivers crossing the line now. No one's able to beat it, they've all been battling too much. And there is Barmer 22 now in 8th position. He's hauling his way up through the field. Towards turns three and four. Down the hill. Oh, a bit wide there from switchback. It was a tad bit wide of the apex at turn three. I thought he might have went into the wall at the exit of turn four, but I don't think he did. Oh, and a spin in the background. Is that Shelley? It was. Shelley losing control of the car at turn seven, and he's got a damaged wing. We have a virtual safety car. And thanks to the debris calls from Shelley's incident there we do have a VSC so we get to pause this race for just a little bit allow the drivers to cool down allow me to find my breath we'll get back on the green flag conditions in a few moments time looking at position changes though electric blade has made a healthy start up four places start at p8 now in p4 and Barma 22 making up the most out of anybody up six positions from 14th to 8th. The VSC should be shortly ending. Hopefully. And we have Shelly the Turtle making their way into the pits to repair their front wing. On the hard tyre right now as well. So this is a bit of a compromise to what they want to do in terms of strategy. Because the idea by starting on the hard tyre is to go nice and long then pit late. Well, getting damaged sort of ruins that. DRS is now enabled. We're back on the green flag racing here at Montreal. F1 Racer has overtaken his teammate. Switchback, he's now into ninth position. Saint has gained a little bit thanks to the VSC. 
He's now close to within 1.4 seconds of the race leader. Darth Vader occupying P3 still has traffic behind him in the form of Electric Blade, Bursey and Mitch Burns as they head down towards the hairpin of turn 10. Tornado in the pit lane as well, putting on a new set of medium compound tyres. Sh he should leave well in front of this pack of cars. Should have a clear track in front of them that should allow them to set some consistent lap times try and find their rhythm as Barmer gets by Andy Wu moves himself into P7 Vermu has lost the lead Vermu made a mistake through the final sector he lost a considerable amount of time all back end stepping out he had to have made a mistake through the wall of champions well, he's now got a bit of work to do. He's got a car in front. Needs to get within one second, try and close in, and take back the lead. Barmer, meanwhile, making up tons of places so far. Up seven places now. Next target is Mitch Burns in the Williams. Down towards turns eight and nine. His third chicane on the race track. Thanks, Wingett. Now he's not close enough to try and pass here into turn 10. Bit of a lock up there, just a teeny tiny one from Barmer. But he gets the car pulled up brilliantly. Out of turn 11, down towards turn 12. You can see he's buried in the slipstream, but he's not quite close enough to attack into the chicane of turns 13 and 14. But speaking of attacking, Blade, Darth Vader, coming out of turn 14, the final corner on the racetrack. Those two were side by side entering, but Vader keeps his P3. Only just though, through turn one into turn two, Blade is all over the back of him. Those medium tires have still got pace after five laps. It'll be interesting to see when those mediums start to drop off. A bit wide there at turn three, it cost Blade three, four tenths. That was an awful run through turns three and four. Cost him a bucket load of time. And now Bursey closes in. Speaking of which, he does have a time penalty. Three seconds, I believe, next to his name. And that's going to be a very common trend we're going to see over the course of this race. We've already got three drivers with time penalties. It's lap six of 35. we got a long way to go, folks, until the checkered flag. So we're going to see... A lot of time penalties, and I mean a lot. I'll be quite proud of anyone who remains penalty free, because that's really, really tough around a racetrack like this. Down the casino straight towards the Wall of Champions. None of these guys are really quite close enough to battle. Yellows are out, that was Cam having a tiny mistake. And that brings out the virtual safety car. So I'm guessing Cam lost his front wing. Yep, he did. So evidently with his accident at the hairpin, he must have hit a wall. And it's completely destroyed the front wing. He comes in to get it repaired. And it's just a VSC. It's not a proper safety car just yet. New tyres will be bolted onto the Alpine. A set of hards, in fact. New wing on. And away he leaves. Nice and simple. Now... Can anyone capitalise thanks to the virtual safety car? The RS is now enabled. We're back on the green flag racing. And it seems like no one's really caught, like uh, gained any time out of that VSC. Not from what I can tell. Mitch Burns is all over the back of Bursey. He gives himself another three second time penalty. I believe that's now six. As he heads down towards the hairpin of turn 10. Look at Burns down the inside. Bursey leaves the door wide open for the Williams driver. Burns moves himself into fifth place, but bursey has got a nice run out of the hairpin. But eventually he gives in and slots in behind. Down the casino straight, Barmer's looking to the outside. It's tight, and Barmer's boxed in, but he's gotten in front. Can Bursey dive it down the inside? No, he can't. Bursey gets... Oh, and a spin for Blade right in front of traffic. Oh, dear, oh, dear. His car's parked. He backs it up. Oh, it's going to be a tricky flick spin from here. Oh, he does well. Does really, really well. Getting it pointed back in the right direction. Oh, but what an awful moment for Blade. He looked terrific in the top five. Looked like he had plenty of pace. But one simple mistake and all that hard work is completely undone. Into the chicane of turn six and seven. Got a three-car fight for four. 
We got Mitch Burns at the front of it. We got Barmer 22 in the middle of it and Bursey hanging right behind. We got Switchback and Andy Wu also involved in this battle. They're a little bit further back, but they're definitely there and they will have DRS to try and challenge. Bursey's made a mistake. He's out of the race. Losing control at turn nine. He slams into the concrete barrier and we have a safety car. Oh, dearie me. Well, I suppose it was only inevitable. Seen a few drivers lose control here and there. And Bursey is the first one to fall. What a shame. Yeah, something else about this racetrack that I didn't really mention too much of is the fact that this is as close to a street circuit it can get without it being a street circuit. The walls, base, the concrete walls basically line the, edge of the edges of the racetrack. So if you do make a mistake, there's not a lot of room for error. And you see there with Bursey, he lost control of the car. And the concrete wall was right there. There was no extra room for him to slow down. He slammed into it, and that's the end of his race. So now Saint has moved on to a set of hard compound tyres. Getting off his mediums onto a set of hards is Mitch Burns as well in P5. Switchback and Andy have moved on to a fresh set of mediums. F1 Racer is on a set of hards. Barmer's on a new set of mediums. Cam's on hard tyres that he pitted onto a little while ago after he broke his front wing. And this is a break that Electric Blade kind of needed. He needed a safety car to try and bunch the field back up after his moment at the Wall of Champions chicane. Hards can go all the way. Okay, good to know, Death Storm. So that puts those fellas in a strategically very strong position. I suppose the next question would be, how will the medium tyres fare doing 26, 27 laps? Because these fellas have pitted onto a new set of mediums, and I'm, I'm guessing they're hoping for either... Two things, they're either hoping their tyres can make it towards the end, which is some stint you have to do on the mediums, or uh, they're hoping for another safety car. Yeah, that is true. I foresee another one as well. I mean, it's not that difficult to bring one out. It really isn't. So we had three drivers not pitting. Maybe two. Yeah, I agree, Death Storm. I don't see one set of mediums doing 26 laps. It's just, yeah, it's a bit too much. Yeah, quite right, KD. Hello, Max. Yeah, it's not too bad at the moment. In terms of the race, pretty good. It's been entertaining. We've had drama. We had some, uh, some exciting qualifying as well. You know, all in all, it's been pretty solid. Shelly. That's at the Wall of Champions, mate. <laughs> That's how difficult the circuit can be. Even uh, behind the safety car, you can get warnings. Hello, Texas. Texas Tornado has spun. At the exit of turn two, he gets going again. He's got a fair bit of catching up to do. In fact, both Shelly and Texas have got a fair bit of of catching up to do. Yeah. Alrighty, gonna do another lap behind the safety car. <laughs> Death taxes in Montreal being as table as Canadian. <laughs> so true, KD. So true. Death taxes and track limit warnings in Montreal, all things that are guaranteed in life. Andy Wu, set of hard tyres bolted onto his car. Alright, so he's taken the time to do another pit stop. He's moved on to a, I believe, fresh set of hard compound tyres. I believe. He'll make his way out of P11. Nothing wrong with the country, winger. I think we can all love Canada for its own uniqueness in certain ways. But this racetrack is a royal pain in the backside. An F122 in particular. 
in previous games it was a massive pain in the backside, but here in this game, where the cars are so incredibly twitchy, yeah, it, it, it's not a fun combo. It's a very tough combo. It makes it even worse when it rains, which is <laughs> a decent chance here at Montreal. Fortunately, with the custom weather, we shouldn't see any wet weather at all. It should be overcast like it is right now, but uh, yeah, we shouldn't see any rain. So the safety car is going back into the pits, even though Shelley and Texas haven't quite caught up yet, but the safety car has already done three tours of the racetrack. So, yeah, AM3 rain, fair enough. But yeah, for AM1, we got overcast conditions, but it isn't set to rain, so. All right, so here's the situation. Top three drivers have yet to pit. Vermu, Darth Vader and Kitapeta, and there goes Vermu. He is not mucking around. He takes off early, makes his way through the chicane. Oh, and almost loses it. Oh, he, oh my goodness me. How was that not a massive accident? He lost control at the exit of the chicane. He tried desperately to gather it up, but in his attempts to try and gather it up, he almost collected Vader and Peta, but somehow they both evaded him. Oh, but they got five second time penalties. What rubbish. They tried to avoid the accident, but the game doesn't care. The game does not care one bit. They get five second time penalties for an illegal overtake. What rubbish. The moon losing control. He gathered it up well enough to not hit a barrier, but he almost collected the top two. Somehow he didn't. But now he's in huge trouble. As switchback, it's a three-second time penalty. He's now down in P7, behind those who are on fresh tyres, no less. So he has to make a pit stop and make his way through the field. Gee whiz. What a restart. Yeah, that's right. You have to keep going. You can get the penalty removed. That is absolutely true. But if there's an opportunity for a free pit stop... It's kind of difficult to not take it. Switch back. Barmer battling for position. Mitch Burns involved as well. Down the main straightaway towards turn one. Barmer has the inside line and he's got the nose in front. He gets the position. He's into fourth. Mitch Burns under a bit of pressure. Switch back behind him is on fresh mediums. And Vermu, he'll be frustrated in his buggery. He's thrown away the race lead and he's now trapped in the middle of the pack. Through turns three and four up towards turn five. Can switch back, find a way by. Petter spun! Spin up! Oh my goodness me! A humongous accident at turn six! Oh no! And we have another safety car. Petter's out and switch back is out. Blade is lucky to survive. Oh dearie me. The drivers piled in there as if ghosting was turned on. But in AM1, it's turned off. That's a huge shunt. My goodness me. Well, there we go. Drama in Montreal. Indeed, KD. Calls of red flag. Well, I reckon it would be in real life. I don't know if uh, the uh, coordinators would order a red flag or not. We'll wait to see bombers come in. Burns has stayed out. So he's opting to try and get those hards to the end, which he should. But he's not going to try and take a free pit stop. Saint, our new race leader. F1 races up to third. Cam Tizzle. Cam Tizzle is in fourth place. <laughs> Andy Wu is in fifth. Switchback has left the session. Of course he has. He piled into that McLaren. As hard as he could. He had nowhere to go. Slammed into the side of him. Got to remember, ghosting is not turned on. Ghosting's turned off. Ah. Oh. <laughs> You're a psychic. You cursed him, wing it. You cursed him. Well, I suppose Peta can blame you for it then. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> But yeah, Petter, unfortunately. That wasn't commentator's guess. That wasn't me. That was chat. Chat calls you to spin. So. Oh, I curse no one.
Just the rice. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Alrighty. Gonna spend some more time with the Aston Martin safety car. We're down to 11. Let's have a look at penalties, shall we? Because there are a few. Saints and Burns have got five second penalties apiece. That they'll have to deal with towards the end of the race. F1 Racer has got a three second time penalty. Cam Tizzle is the leading driver who does not have a time penalty in fourth place. Yes, yeah, the Golden Snitch. That's what you have to catch in Quidditch. That's right. Andy Wu in fifth place with a three second penalty. Barmer in sixth. He's on fresh mediums. He doesn't have a penalty. The move behind on fresh mediums. He doesn't have a penalty. Neither does Vader in P8. Shelly the Turtle in ninth has three seconds. Electric Blade has six. He can count his lucky stars tonight. Because somehow he wasn't heavily involved in that accident with Petter and Switchback. Somehow he survived. The Texas Tornado in 11. No penalty. There's a decent chance, I reckon, KD, that Vamu will send it on Barma. These two have a nice little rivalry going on, so Vamu's going to try and give Barma a hard time. Barma's main goal will be trying to get towards the front as quickly as possible. Be nice and simple. There's the tyres that everyone is on. So we've got relatively fresh hard tyres for the top five, then we've got fresh mediums for the next three cars. Shelley's on five lap old mediums. Same story with Electric Blade and Texas Tornado, but they're on the hard tire. Same age as Shelley's tires, but a different compound. Now, Saint, when does he go? The Moo went early. Saint is not going early. <laughs> he gets through the wall of champions unscathed. Does a much better job than Vamu did at the previous restart. We're back on the green flag racing. It's lap 16 of 35 here at Montreal. Out of turn two comes the leaders. Saint with a clear track in front of him. He has a license to push. Now, try and utilize the clear air. Oh, Barmer. Barmer's close. He wants a piece of the action. He wants to get in front. Not close enough to send it on Andy. There is Vamu right behind. Bit of a moment from Andy there. Through turn six and seven. Oh, he almost got his nose chopped off there. Very tight stuff. Blade spins. That is at the edge of the turn seven. He's now down to last. Through the chicane. Oh, bit of a moment from Barma. Little wiggle. But here he goes. He gets by Andy. Nice and easy there. Andy, though, has the inside line into the hairpin. He's going to try and fight this. It's tight on the exit. There's contact between the two cars. Barmer wins the battle. He gets himself into fifth. Next is Cam Tizzle in the Alpine. He is drawing alongside. Looking to the inside here at turn 13. Gets in front easy. Into P4 he goes. Down the main straightaway towards turn one. Barmer's next target is F1 Racer in the Aston Martin. Andy Wu's under attack here. Vamu looking to the inside at turn two. Now looking around the outside at turn two. Trying to find a way by. Darth Vader's going to get involved here. He's not close enough to battle into turn three though. Down into the chicane of three and four. All the drivers getting through unscathed. Blade had another moment down the main straightaway. Probably at the Wall of Champions chicane. Vader close, but not close enough. Barmer gets by Racer. I think Racer... Might have made a mistake. Vamu gets by Andy Wu. He's into P6. Next target for him will be Cam Tizzle as they head into turns 8 and 9. Electric Play gets a 3 second time penalty. He got that through turns 3 and 4. Down towards the hairpin of turn 10. Vamu looking to the outside. He breaks deep. Looking the long way round. Oh, he's going to end up in the wall. Oh, oh, he almost collects Andy Wu there. He had to check up quite a bit to avoid hitting the wall on the outside. And as a result, Andy Wu almost drove into the side of him. Got some side-by-side -side action heading down the straightaway towards the wall of champion. Three wide as Andy goes down the inside and takes a lot of them. Cam now down to seventh position. He's battling Darth Vader down the main straight as Barmer overtakes Mitch Burns for second position. Now making it a one Red Bull 1-2. Cam, a bit of a moment there at turn one. 
Loses a few more positions now down to ninth. He has to battle Texas Tornado. And Andy Wu, that was gutsy down the inside at the wall of champions. That could have been a massive accident. But all the drivers got through quite well, I have to say. Quite right, wing it. Three wide and they made it. Barmer 22 has overtaken his teammate. He is now the race leader. He has carved his way through to the front and now he's there. Uh, he's going to pull away too. Yellows, Shelley's out, crashing out. At the exit of turn nine, identical to Bursey. And we have another safety car. Safety car number three has been deployed. Uh, well, let's start with that camera angle. Played on a new set of mediums as well. We're down to 10 cars. And we've just crossed the halfway mark. Saints in. Mitch Burns stays out. So Saint will have to serve a five second time penalty here. You can see how long they have to wait. Gee whiz. Vamu will get in front of Saint. Yep, he's got in front of Saint. And Andy Wu has gotten in front of Saint. That's how damaging a five second penalty can be. Cam has put on a new set of tires. He's taking advantage of this situation. Electric Blade, he's got a bit of catching up to do, but he should be able to catch up so long as he doesn't do anything too silly. Right. Yeah, that's right, KD. If you survive, you score something. So. That's an interesting question, Wing It. I'm not sure. I am not sure. I mean, with these safety car periods, it does extend the life of the medium tyre somewhat. Because you're not pushing as hard on it as you would under green flag conditions. So, maybe he can. It will be a bit of a stretch, I think. But maybe he can. Wait and see. Which burns right behind on 10 lap old hards. They should make it. So should uh, F1 racers tyres. They should make it easy. Doing another lap behind the safety car. Nice and steady. Right, let's have a look at some of the other details. So everyone's made stops, obviously. Vader's in. Vader's back in. Interesting. He's going to get off these five lap old mediums, and what is he going to bolt on? Another spare set that he's got. So new, fresh tyres. Probably should have did, done that a lap ago. Yep, yeah, five stops five stops for a Texas Tornado and he's fourth <laughs> I wonder if someone's got a button it try and do a five six stops and then end up winning the race so yeah everyone has made at least one stop Bummer's made two Mitch Burns and F1 Racer have made one Texas has made five Vermoo's made two Andy's made three same thing, Cam have made two, so has Darth Vader, and Electric Blade has made four. In terms of position change, well, you can see the biggest gainer of the lot. Barma 22 up 13, Mitch Burns up three, F1 Racer up six, Texas Tornado up nine spots. The move down four, not a surprise there after what happened earlier. Andy Wu down two, Saint down five, Cam up two, Vader down six. An electric blade down two. Yeah, it's going to be a late call from the safety car. So, blade has caught up. Safety car lights are out. And Barmer takes control of the field. Alright. Tyres are going to be an interesting talking point towards the end of this race. So will penalties. Penalties are going to be a huge talking point. Out of the wall of champions, Chicane. Barmer's still waiting, waiting, and there he goes. He takes off. We're back on the green flag racing. It's lap 21 of 35 here in Montreal. Tornado attacks. He's having a look at Racer, and he's gotten in front. He's into third. Nice move. Saint trying to get by Racer as well. Unable to do so, heading towards turn three. He slots in behind. That's a wise thing to do. 
Cam running wide, cuts the grass, Vettel style, and he tumbles down to ninth. Andy Wu, a three second time penalty as well. Probably cutting a bit too much at turn three. But Andy, he is going for those real awkward overtakes at places where you shouldn't make overtakes. He did it down the inside of the Wall of Champions, and he just did it down the inside of turn three. Through turn eight, around turn nine. Vimu under a bit of pressure because his wing mirrors are full of orange. Andy trying to find a way by. Saint trying to find a way by. Down the inside into the hairpin. So is Andy Wu. Andy puts Vimu into the wall there at the exit of turn 10. Vimu clipped the wall. Does he have damage? I think he might. He moves behind Darth Vader. Vader moves to the inside. Having a look here. Can't fully commit to the move. The move stays out. I'm guessing he didn't get any damage from that clip. It definitely looked like a hit though. It certainly looked like it. Around turn one. Into turn two. Nice and steady through this opening complex. So easy to lose control of the car through here. The drivers do well. Negotiating the section. Tornado gets a three second time penalty. Four multiple warnings. He's currently occupying P3. He's got Red Bull all over the back of him. Saint on fresh tyres is fast. Exiting turn seven. Down the back straight away towards turn eight. Texas just lets him through. Says, mate, I'm not batting, battling you. Just go. I'll try and follow you around for a bit. Oh, a moment from Andy there. He lost control of the car at the exit of turn nine. For some reason, was looking at F1 Racer. But yeah, Andy Wu almost had the exact same accident that Shelly the Turtle and Bursey had at turn nine, but he kept it out of the wall. He switches on the battery, but you can see the Ferrari of Vamu pulling away. Ferrari's got some decent straight line speed, it seems, as Shelly has left the session. Into the chicane of turns 13 and 14. DRS is now enabled, and Andy's got a pretty decent run, but again, he's lacking the straight line speed to attack the Ferrari into turn one. There's Burns and Saint, Tornado, F1 Racer, Darth Vader, Vamu, Andy Wu, and there's Electric Blade and Cam Fizzle. That's the whole field. Through turn three, down through turn four, up towards the right-hander of turn five. Vader's close, not close enough though to attack into turn six. But DRS is now enabled, and will spice things up a little bit. F1 Racer should get some DRS assistance. Vader, he's deep in the slipstream, closing in fast, but not by enough to attack into turn eight. Though racers run wide, it's cost him time. And now Vader closes in even more and looks to the outside, heading into turn 10. He breaks it in deep. Racer still has the inside line. It's a drag race now, out to turn 11 and down the casino straight. Who has DRS? It's Darth Vader. He has it. Saint overtakes Burns. Vamu overtakes Racer as the Aston Martin driver doesn't have any DRS assistance. Burns gets a three second time penalty next to his name now. That's very close to the outside wall there as Tornado's been overtaken by Vader. The Haas driver moves up to fourth. Andy Wu up to seventh. Racer now under a bit of pressure from Electric Blade who was all over the back of him exiting turn two. Up towards turn three now. He's a bit too far behind to attack here. The Moo on the back of Tornado. Right on the back of the Alpha Tauri. Around turn five. A wiggle. A touch. Oh my goodness me. Thank goodness that didn't result in an accident. And Tornado lets everyone through it seems. He ran awfully wide there at turn six. And now we got some uh, three car action here. As Blake gets by F1 Racer. There we go. Down the inside. Cutting too much there. That's a warning for sure for Electric Blade. Here he comes, down towards the hairpin of turn 10. He looks to the inside. Doesn't fully commit on the brakes so. though. Tornado leaves the door open. Well, it's tight on the exit, but they both get through. Andy Wu's overtaken Vermoo as well. That is for P5. So Vermoo now down to six. Down the casino straight towards the wall of champions. F1 Racer overtakes Tornado there. It's in front into P8. Cam Tizzle, can he get involved Pat? He's got some DRS to play with. And he does get in front. P9 for the Alpine driver now. Farmer 22, still leading the way. He's got a gap of 4.6 seconds over his teammate Saint. 
a Red Bull 1-2. Third place currently being occupied by Mitch Burns, but he's on aging hard tyres. He has Darth Vader closing in at a rate of knots. He is two tenths behind, heading into the chicane of turns eight and nine. Chugging it through, cutting a lot there, Vader. That could have been a warning. Down towards the hairpin of turn 10. Will Vader send it? No, it's the answer. Yellows are at its tornado who has spun again at turn nine. It seems to be a spinning hotspot, but fortunately for tornado, he's still in the race. Down the casino straight towards the wall of champions. Vader overtakes Burns with ease. With the sheer power of DRS, he gets through. He's back onto the podium. It's now a Cos 1, 2, 3. Barma, Saint, and Darth Vader. Representing the league quite well, I'd say. Through turn 2. The field's starting to spread out. The battles are starting to die down. But I imagine strategy is going to become more of a big deal as the laps tick over and we get closer towards the checkered flag. Barmer's on aging medium tyres, so is Mitch Burns. He is going to be vulnerable to Andy Wu, to Vermu and Electric Blade as Tornado gets a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. F1 Racer is under a bit of pressure. Saint gets a three second time penalty as Cam closes in but not by enough to attack into turn eight. Andy Wu, eight tenths behind Mitch Burns. A bit of work to do to catch up. A little bit wide there at the hairpin. Locked up, missed the apex by about a foot or so. He got around the corner nice and cleanly. No wheel spin, importantly no wheel spin at the exit of the hairpin. Into the chicane, turns 13 and 14. The World of Champions chicane. Down the main straight towards turn one. Andy closing in bit by bit. Through turn one. Into turn two. The gap shrinks to two and a half tenths. Out of the short right hand. Sweeper! Oh, Andy has a moment. And here comes Vermu on the attack. Through the chicane. Down the hill. Now into turn five. The gap between Andy and Vermu has shrunk to half a second. But a small, costly moment. Could have been so much more there from Andy Wu. Losing control at the exit of turn two. Got on the gas a bit too much. Car didn't like it and it almost spat itself into the wall. But fortunately for Andy, he was able to gather it up. And he's still running in fifth place. Blade closing in a little bit on Vermu here. Not by enough to try and attack though. Into the hairpin at turn ten. But he's definitely there. Right behind the Ferrari. Oh! from Burns he loses what that's at turn 11 how on earth did he lose control there maybe he touched the grass on the inside yes look if you look at his front left there's a bit of muck on it there's some dirt a bit of grass on that front left I reckon what he did exiting the hairpin at turn 10 he cut a bit too much of the left hand kink at turn 11 and whilst touching the grass and under acceleration he lost control of the car. The car lost all grip. And I do think he did tap the wall on the left-hand side. But he's now down to ninth. Alrighty. So, Andy Wu now at the front of the train. And he's got half a second in hand as Tornado spins again. Oh, excuse me. I had to mute myself there. Oh, I had to sneeze. Oh, twitchy nose. Yeah, Tornado had a moment out of turn one. He's still running though, that's the main thing. Oh, really twitchy nose. The move's now all over the back of Andy Wu now. This is going to be a real battle between Andy and Vermu. We've seen how much straight line speed that Ferrari has got. Oh, he almost put it into the wall. <laughs> well, he's gone through. He's down the inside and he's through into fourth. But he almost put it into the wall out of the turn 12 kink. Oh my goodness me. Oh, and a spin from Blade. Oh, and again he has spun at the final corner. Not as bad as last time. But it's caused the same effect. He's lost positions. He's down to eighth. It promotes his teammate, Cam Tizzle, to P6 on the totem pole. What a race.
Especially after what happened last week in Bahrain. He looks superb at the moment. He's looking at a point scoring finish. Just needs to keep it tidy and remain focused. And straight away Andy Wu with DRS open closing in but yeah, not by enough to attack here into turns 8 and 9. Which burns a 3 second time penalty for multiple warnings. Oh dear Mitch, what could have been? It was a small mistake at turn 11. Cost you of a uh, real nice points finish, but you're still in the points. That's the main thing. You're still running. All you need to do is get to the checkered flag and score. All you need to do. <laughs> yeah, look, Petter, I reckon a few of us playing F122 feel the exact same, man. Oh, I I completely sympathize with you. F122 has really drained a lot of us of motivation to play this game. To play this series as a whole. It's just been a steady downward trend for the past couple of name, uh, games now. Quite right, Connor. It, it, it's a lot of poo. Plenty of poo. With an EA stamp of approval. Because, of course, it does have that. Like all the EA money, and he's still making this sort of stuff. So. Darth Vader closing in. Don't think by enough to attack here at the hairpin, though. I reckon he's going to have a go down the casino straight into the Wall of Champions chicane. Yeah, fair play. I, my first league racing experience, Deathstorm, was on 2019. And it had its issues, for sure. It had lobby issues where... It, lobbies would crash and we have to start up again which was a bit irritating it was something that I was hoping would be improved in F1 2020 and boy didn't F1 2020 just start off with a bang my goodness with the CWOS glitch connecting with online services glitch it was horrid horrid absolutely worthless at the beginning of F1 2020's life but it eventually got better, and then we got F1 2021, and now we're here with these next generation cars. There was a lot of anticipation going into this game. But unfortunately, the cars aren't quite enjoyable to drive as Darth Vader draws alongside and gets in front of Saint. He moves into P2. I've noticed, though, from a lot of people who have got every assist turned on under the sun, the game's more enjoyable to play. That's quite understandable. But when you've got a no assist tier like AM1 and like many other tiers in many other racing leagues. Oh, and there goes Saint! Oh my dearie me! He's put it into the wall, and there goes the move, and here comes Andy Wu. Wowie. And he's got front wing damage as well. He'll have to pit and get that thing fixed. Oh, well, he's going to stay out, try and fight it out. So, the battle between Andy and Vamu, it's now a battle for the final podium spot. We have four laps to go. But yeah, with no assists on this game, the cars are incredibly twitchy. They're very unstable to drive. They're not enjoyable. I don't mind challenging physics, but at least try and make it enjoyable. The, the physics are just not that. It's just so difficult and painful. And it feels like at certain moments, particularly when you're riding over curbs or you're going over bumps, the physics sort of enter an RNG mode because it feels like sometimes you can ride over them with ease. And then the next thing you know, you ride over the same curb and your car does a pirouette. It turns itself into a ballerina and just spins and spins and spins. And there's nothing you can do about it. As Electric Blake gets a three second time penalty. It's really, really annoying. Oh, and a moment there from Andy. My goodness. Yeah. I I can relate to that to a degree, Kid and Petter. I, I don't call it a job, though. It's more... It feels like a chore. That's what it feels like. Um, to me. Where it just feels like it's something you have to do. Like cleaning around the house, doing the vacuuming or something. It feels like that. It has that same sort of feeling towards it. It's not particularly enjoyable. 
You know, at least with a job, you're earning something. With a chore, it's something you have to do around the house. You know? With this, it's just something you have to do. It's just something you have to deal with. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it is like that in Peta, where, you know, you have it in a high gear, and the car breaks into wheel spin, and off you pop, away you spin. So... It's just unfortunate, really. Uh, one piece of positive news, though. I'm not sure that anyone else would know. Maybe KD would know. But the handling director of Codemasters, he's been a long-time handling director, as Barma said to me, fast as lap. He is leaving Codemasters at the end of 2023. So they're going to have to hire some new personnel, personnel to work on the physics models for F1 games in the future. So, take it uh, as a sign of hope, potentially, that beyond 2023, we might have an improved game in 24, maybe 25. But we've got a long way to go until we reach that. We've got to see what 2023 looks like. And to be totally honest, after looking at 22, looking at 21, 20 and 19, games that I've played religiously, it doesn't look good for F123 at all, so... Yeah, I doubt it as well, Kevin. Seems that the battles have calmed down a bit, though Cam Tizzle has closed onto the back of Saint. Now, Cam doesn't have to battle Saint here. Saint's got eight seconds, I think. Oh, sorry, three seconds worth of penalties. He did have a five second, he served it, that's right, now I remember. Cam doesn't have to battle Saint at all. Just stuck in, staying behind. Yeah, I, I can relate that to Kit and Petter. As Barma 22 begins the final lap here at Montreal. Andy's losing time to Vamu, but I don't think Andy should really battle at all. He just needs to stay behind and take fourth as Cam gets a three second time penalty. That's what you... You shouldn't have done that, Cam. All you needed to do was stay behind Saint. And that fifth place was guaranteed and he's almost gone into the back of the Red Bull. Oh, gee whiz, and now he's going to lose a place to his teammate. All he needed to do was keep it tidy and just stay in sixth. And he would have taken fifth place thanks to Saint's penalty. Yeah, no, he's blown... He's blown sixth now, I believe. Oh, no, Blade's got... Blade's got 15 seconds worth of penalties. Gee whiz. Yeah, that's true. At least F1 manager has been... A decent success for its um, debut game, at the very least. Well, it's a result that I think everyone kind of expected, really. Another dominating performance from Barma 22. Should be a clean sweep in terms of points as well. I do believe he's got faster slap. Another podium for Darth Vader as well. This time, he will finish in second place. And Vamu will also finish on the podium in third. Andy Wu fourth, followed by Saint in fifth position. A solid points haul for Red Bull once again. Electric Blade and Can Tizzle will finish in P6. Blade tumbles down to eighth thanks to his mountains worth of penalties. F1 Racer will finish in seventh. Mitch Burns will cross the line in ninth. What could have been if it weren't for that moment at turn 11? He either touched the grass on the inside of turn 11 or he just touched the curb and lost control because I think I saw something similar from Andy Wu and Saint and I don't think they touched the grass initially when they lost control I think they just touched the curb I relate to that as well Petter like, I personally don't have F1 manager I like the driving aspect um, of racing games so, yeah, something like F1 Manager doesn't really appeal to me, but at least it's been much more of a success compared to F1 22. Speaking of success, Farmer's got a fair chunk of it right now. Back to back wins, back to back full complement of points. This is looking like more of the, cha more of the same from the three time AM1 Drivers' Champion. It just looks untouchable out there. Had to put in some work for it, though. 
carving his way up through the field. Put on some nice overtakes. It's good to watch. Are we going to look at the podium game? Thank you. Tell you what, with how long it loaded, I probably won't be able to get final results. So someone better save it. Someone better save the final results, because I don't think I'm going to get them. But what a performance again from Barma 22. Back-to-back -back wins at the opening part of this season. So our fader will finish in second for move third. Good night, Max. So, the unofficial results on the Canadian Grand Prix. Farmer 22 is your race winner. With fastest lap as well, you'll score 26 points at the end of this race. Darth Vader will finish in second with Vamu, and the final podium spot in third. And they appear to be the only drivers who didn't get time penalties over the course of this race. Andy Wu will finish in fourth, followed by Saint in fifth. Cam Tinsel, that's a massive improvement from last week. Sixth place finish. Points for you, mate. Well done. F1 Race is 7th, followed by Electric Blade and Mitch Burns in 9th. Texas Tornado was our final finisher in 10th. Shelly the Turtle, Kevin Petter, Switchback and Bursey all retired out of this race. 14 cars started, 10 cars finished. And only 3 cars ended up with no penalties. Tell you what, we had plenty to talk about over this event. It was actually quite a good one, I'd say. Towards the end, it mellowed out, as you'd expect, with the field spreading out. We had a bit of drama with Saint and uh, Cam, of course. That provided us with a bit of something. But the result shouldn't really surprise anybody. Don't forget, you can change oh, the appearance of your bugger off. Up. Go away. Bloody lady. Stop talking over me. Um, Red Bull, that's the one I wanted. Yeah, the result, yeah, wasn't really in question, especially after what time Barma put on the border, 10 flat, and during the middle of qualifying. Yeah, it sort of set the tone. And he put on a great display, making his way through the field. We had some great dicing, some great battles, some three wide stuff, which was quite exciting. Uh, towards the end of qualifying, it was quite interesting to see who would start where for the Grand Prix. So yeah, no, I'd say it was a pretty complete race here in Montreal, a decent one. I apologise to all the drivers who had to deal with it though. The racetrack is just not fun to drive around, that's for sure. Especially with no assist. But you persevered, you got through, so pat's on the back to everyone, so well done. But I think, folks, with everything said and done, it's time for us to end the stream. Oh, I've been Lane Everingham, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next week for round three of the championship at Circuit of the Americas for the United States Grand Prix. That's bound to be a fair bit of fun. Kota definitely has a lot of potential to create exciting racing, though it's certainly not the easiest racetrack to drive around, that's for sure, but we'll touch on that more next week. But until then, folks, it's goodbye.